Hello and good morning to all. Welcome to your computer class. Well, we are learning our second chapter that is functions and charts in MS Excel and it is the third part of this chapter. Till now in this chapter we have discussed about some functions and formulas. Well, in the previous video we have discussed about the mathematical functions and strength functions along with their practical use. In this video today we have to discuss about the statical functions in detail. Well these statical functions are very important. These functions are generally used for most of the applications. These are used whenever we have to compare two values or whenever we have to find the maximum minimum or we have to count the given values. So now let's begin. So we have to learn five statical functions of MS Excel. The first function that we have to discuss is min function. As from the name it is clear it is min. Min means minimum or the lowest value. So this function is used whenever we have to find the smallest value from the given range of cells. So this function will return you the smallest value from the given range of cells or the cells that you will select. The syntax is similar to the previous functions. We have to write min and then after writing this min we have to pass the cell range or arguments within the parenthesis of min function. Next function we have as max function. Max function is the comprised form of maximum and this max function is used to find out the maximum or the largest value from the given range. The syntax of max function is equals to max and then we have to write the range of cells. So these two functions are generally used to find out the minimum and maximum value. Next we have a mathematical function which is generally used as a statical tool. Our function is average. This average function is also a mathematical function but it is generally used for analyzing the values. That's why we are covering this function as our statistical function. This statistical function average is used to find out the average or arithmetic mean of the given numbers. So this will return you the arithmetic mean or the average of the values which are given in that particular range of cells. The syntax of this function is very simple. We have to write equals to then we have to write this complete term average and this term average will be followed by the cell reference or the range of cells. Fine. Our next function is count function. This count function is one of the most important function and it is used mostly whenever we have to mark your attendance or we have to count the number of students of a particular class. This function is generally used to count the number of cells which are carrying some numerical values. Fine. So it is generally used whenever we have to count the number of entries which are filled or the number of entries which are carrying some number or numeric values. This count function will only count the numeric values. It cannot count any other value like alphabets or letters. So it will count the values which are given in the range of cells and the syntax is similar to the previous three functions. We have to write count and then this count is followed by the range of cells. Next we have count if. This count if is a very important function. It is a logical plus statistical function because with the help of this count if function we can perform a count operation depending on a particular criteria. Now let's take an example first. Suppose you have a list of some marks of a class. Now in that list you want to find out all the students or number of students who are getting more than 40 marks. Fine. Suppose you want to find the number of students who are getting more than 40 marks then for that purpose you will use the count if function because this count if function has two arguments in the syntax of this count if function we have to pass the range of cells and then we also have to pass the criteria this criteria is the condition which will be applied over the selected range fine so it was a discussion or description of all these functions now we have to discuss all these functions practically so let's begin well here I have already prepared a spreadsheet for this class. In this particular column A we have some numbers. These are some random numbers which I have picked. Then we have to use some functions and these are the basis that we have to apply over here. First we have to find out the minimum value from this given range of cells. Now for finding the minimum value we have to write equals to min. Then we have to open parenthesis and then we have to select this whole cell range. Fine. After doing this much we have to close this bracket and then we have to press the enter key. So you can see that now this cell is showing us the minimum value. 
Now let's suppose you want to find out the maximum value. For this we need to write equals to max and then we have to pass the cell range. Fine. And then we have to press the enter key. This will return you the maximum value from this given range of cells. Now let's suppose after writing this values, suppose I am changing a particular value. Fine. Suppose instead of this 13, I have to write 23. So when I will do so, it will affect the values of this particular range also. Suppose over here I have written 23, then I will press the enter key. So as you can see, the moment when I clicked on the, when I press the enter key, the value of this minimum value has changed. Now it is 20. Fine. So it means if you are using the concept of cell ranges and you are changing any value from the spreadsheet, that change will be reflected in the result of functions also. So that's why we are using these all functions. Fine. Next we have to calculate average. Suppose we have to calculate the average of all these values. So for that we have to write equals to average. And for average we have to use the full spelling. You don't have to write only AVG. You have to write the full spelling of average. And then you have to select this whole cell range. And then you have to press the enter key. Fine. It will give you the accurate average up to all possible decimal digits. Then next we have suppose you have to calculate the average of some selective numbers. Let's suppose you want to find out the average of few cells only not of all cells. So for that you have to write equals to average. Then you have to open the bracket and you have to write all the cell references manually. Like suppose I want to calculate the average of A2, A3, then let's say A6 and A7. Fine. So as you can see, I am writing all these references over here and it is all uh, and it is automatically marking all these cells. Fine. So after doing this much, I have to press the enter key. Now we have got the average of these few four cells which I have selected over here. Fine. Let's suppose we have to count the numerical values which are given here. So for that we have to write equals to count. We have to open the bracket and we have to select all these cells. Then we have to press the enter key. And we have got the number as 7. So it means all total we have 7 entries. You can check it manually also. Fine. Now let's suppose we have one more value in this column. Fine. In this 8 cell we have one more value. And Let's suppose that value is my name. Fine. And I am performing this operation once again. I have written equals to count. But this time I am selecting these total 8 cells. So now let's see what will be the result. As you can see it is not counting this name Rajat. Because this count function can only count numerical values. It cannot count any other value type. Fine. Then our next function is or our next term is we have to count or we have to find out all the values which are more than 50. Well, for this we have to use the countif function. Fine. Just keep one thing in your mind. Whenever you have to count anything on the basis of a specific condition, for that you always have to use the countif function. Fine. So our next three are the examples of countif function. It is values more than 50. So it means in this we have to use countif function. Next one is say, uh, saying we have to count the values which have values less than 50. For this also we have to use countif function. And next suppose we have to find any specific value. So for this also we have to use the countif function. So first we are starting with the values which are more than 50. Now for finding the values more than 50 you have to write equals to count if without any spaces. Then you have to open the parenthesis and then you have to select the cells with the numerical values. Fine. Then you have to put a comma. And then in double quotes, fine, just keep this thing in your mind very clearly. In the double quotes only you have to write your criteria. You don't have to write your criteria without the double quotes. Because if you will write any condition or any criteria without the double quotes, then that function will not be the proper function. Fine. Now because we have to find the values more than 50, so we will write inside double quotes so greater than 50. Fine. And then we have to press the enter key. And we have got the result as 3. Now let's do one thing. Let's check it manually first. So as we can see that we only have these three values. So it means our result is correct. Now let's suppose we have to count the values which are less than 50. So for that we have to use the similar function. We will write equals to count if. Then we have to select the cell range. Then we have to put a comma and in double quotes we have to write less than 50. And then we have to close the bracket. The result will be 4 
because in this given range we only have four values which are less than 50 whereas three values were more than 50. Now let's suppose you have to find any specific number suppose I want to find 20 or I want to count all the 20s which I have written fine so first I have to increase the range a bit suppose I'm increasing it suppose I have written three times 20 now I just want to count 20 fine I just want to count the value that is 20 so for that I can write it like this I will write equals to count if then I have to select the whole range fine that is still a 10 now oh sorry that is still a 9 now then we have to put a comma and in double quote we have to write equals to we are because we are performing an equal to comparison so we will write equals to 20 then we have to close the bracket and we have to press the enter key our result is 3 fine this 3 is here just because we have 3 20s which are over here fine now if I will change any of these values suppose I am writing this as 120 now so it will be changed fine so it means if you are changing any value in your value set it will also change the output of your functions fine so that's all for today thanks for watching stay healthy and stay safe you can comment down all your queries well till now we have discussed the first three types of functions in our next class we have to discuss about the logical function in that class only I will also discuss all your doubts. So, if in case you have any doubts or queries, you can comment down all your queries. Fine? Thank you so much.